Hey, my name is Ivy Schecksneider and I'm a gated horse trainer from Northern Illinois. And today we are talking about how to use your reins. Now, my mom asked me what I was talking about today and I said that and they're like, well, that's, you can tell I was like, that's kind of weird. Why would you talk about that? Everybody should know how to use their reins. Well, I thought so too. And then I would go to clinics and do lessons and people were really just not comfortable using their reins in a really simple way. We're not talking about advanced training or riding, but there's a really simple method to using your reins that gives you more control. And honestly, it just makes you safer if you can correctly, you know, pull this off or use this. And that's what I'm just wanting to encourage everybody to do is be a little bit safer. Now, the cool thing is, even if you don't have access to your horse, you can use this technique at home. In fact, I encourage people to use it while they are, you know, sitting in front of the TV because you can do this with almost anything. The goal is to take a piece of rope or reins or anything you have in your house. You can use bailing twine. You can use almost anything for this and practice and get really good. And I'm going to show you the exercise, which seems incredibly simple. And sometimes I'm like, why am I even making this video? But maybe this is really going to help keep someone safe and just help them understand how to use their reins. Now, this is going to be two slightly different techniques and for riding one-handed and for riding two-handed. But primarily I'm focusing on if you're riding direct reining or with two, two hands. The thing is... When the horse is, everything is normal and nothing's going wrong, it's very easy to use your reins. When you start doing training or when something exciting happens, that's when you'll usually have an issue or when you really need to know how to use your reins. So you may go, well, my horse is great. We neck rein. All this stuff is good. Yada, yada, yada. Wonderful. What do you, ha what do, you do when you're doing some training and you have to be adjusting your reins constantly? Or what happens when the horse does jump suddenly and you need to work on getting him back on track. So that's what I'm going to show you a little bit today. So hey Maggie and Marlis and hi Nancy and Beth from Arizona and Nan and Anita. She says looking good. Thank you. And Valerie and uh, Tanya and uh, Regina says that's where the sun is. Yes it is quite bright today and it's also where the wind is. And Hanik from Netherlands and Bonnie and Stephen and Kathleen from Ohio, and Sherry from Indiana, and Nan says, boy, it's sunny where you are, it's pouring today here, well, it was rainy yesterday, so, you know, it goes in spurts, and Diane from New York, and Treva, hey guys, so many people, oh, it is so fun, okay, before I get started really quick, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna publish um, this poll, so basically, here's the question, is next week, we're not gonna do a video every day, so I'm going to do a video. I want to know how often, since people are getting busier and slowly things are opening up and the weather's getting nicer, let me know how many videos you like per week starting next week. And it will change. So basically, if you're like, this is too many videos, but we still want to do one so we can interact, great. If you want still a lot, then just go ahead and click three and just give me some feedback on that. And the poll should be up for a little while. So here we go. We're going to talk about, again, how to use the reins. And so this is what you want to practice at home. Even if you feel like you're really comfortable, just practice it a little bit just to make sure you're like, yep, this feels good. Here's the reason why it's really important for you to be able to adjust your reins quickly is when we're doing the head down, if you watch any of the videos, you will see me constantly adjusting my reins. I will let the horse drop their head and my reins go totally loose and then they put their head up and I have to gather my reins back up and then they put their head down and I drop my reins and then their head comes up and I pick my reins up again and I do this constantly, just all of the time. And so I have to be very comfortable adjusting my reins and then what if the horse wants to go a certain direction? I have to be very comfortable getting that rein shorter. And so that's why I made this video to show you guys. Let's see, so many people today. Uh, hi, Linda and Monica from Colorado, and Diana from Texas, and Christy from Texas, and Linda from Texas, and Angie. Uh, Angie says eight videos. <laughs> and Jean from Maine, and Anita, and Sherry, and Vita from Arizona. Linda says, I look for your video every day. Valor says three. Well, and it's just that I'm seeing that there's fewer people on here every day. So I'm just trying to cut back to a manageable number. So I'll probably do three next week and that'll be pretty fun. And 
let's see. Yeah, wow, you guys still really want a lot of videos. Okay, I will do my very best to keep that content coming. So here we go. Here's how to use your reins. I'll show this video a couple times. So this is the idea that we're holding your reins in two hands. And yes, you should be holding the reins with the reins coming from your pinky to your to over the top of your thumb. Now the idea is that when you're ready to gather up one rein, you put you grip the rein with the other hand. So you're grabbing left rein, grabbing uh, the le left rein with your right hand and sliding your hand down. Okay. You'll see this a few times, so don't worry. So again, you grab the rein with your other hand and slide your hand down. And the goal is to be able to do this quickly. And here is if you were riding one-handed. You hold until your horse has a loose rein, and then you can slide down with the other hand to turn. Because a lot of people are like, well, how do I control my horse if I'm holding one-handed? So hold in two hands, put your hands together, slide your hand down, and then you can pull. And the other thing I want to mention, too, is that when you pull, so let's say your horse is kind of going crazy and you really need to get him under control, so you slide your hand down, and then you pull. You, it's really important that you pull the correct way. You want to pull with your elbow and wrist kind of going straight toward your hip. And I couldn't really do this because my reins were too short to show you, but see how my hand comes back to my, my wrist, comes to my, hip, to my pelvic bone there, on, my right, on my, the right hand there? That's where you want to pull that you have the most control. So you hold the reins in two hands, gather the rein, both reins in one hand, and slide your hand down. Does that make sense to you guys? I'm going to let that just play so you can see that. And if you have any questions, please shout out. Uh, let's see. Linda, let's see. Pamela says, hey, looking cute. Thanks, Pamela. And Crystal from Ohio. And Ori from Israel. Hi, Linda. And Sandy and Marla says, I love the dog. That's my dog, Cloud. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. So, again, this video is to talk about just, just the basics of how to use your reins. And so what you need to do is when you're sitting in front of the TV... When you're just chilling at home, I just have the other end of my bridle draped across a chair. Um, Monica says, is there any difference between using split reins? Uh, not really, except for where the end of the reins goes. Um, so how you hold them might be different in terms of where the end goes, and that's different for every rider. But I ride the same way, the same way to shorten the reins. That's a great question. Uh, and again, these don't have to be rope reins. And when you practice, you can use a bailing twine, you can use regular rope, you can use actual reins. It doesn't even matter. The idea is just that you're practicing gathering your reins together and sliding your hand down as far as you can. Because some people will gather up their reins and then slide their hand down just like six inches. You have to be able to slide your hand down really far. And you just want to get that practiced. And hey, Christy from Nova Scotia. Awesome. Uh, Diane says, what kind of reins am I using flat or round? I'm using round rope reins. Generally, when I ride, uh, these reins are attached to my bozal, which is why they're rope reins, because that's what you use. When I'm generally riding just with a bit, I, I personally use flat leather dressage, or English reins. So they're just plain flat leather. There's no braiding, because I want those reins to be able to slide through my fingers. So I don't want rubber grippies on there, uh, because I want that to be able to slide. Uh, and I prefer the leather. It doesn't seem to beat up my hands as much as like the rope reins. If the horse pulls, I'm tempt I'm more likely to get a rope burn if I am using if I'm using the nylon reins or rope reins like this than if I use leather reins. The leather reins don't seem to burn my hands as much. They tend to just uh, I just get calluses rather than having an actual rope burn. Uh, and so you can use flat or round. I know some people use it because their hands feel better with a certain kind of reins, and there's nothing wrong. I'm not advocating that you use the reins I'm seeing in this video, just that that's what I grabbed. <laughs> but you can practice with any kind of reins. Uh, I, again, I normally ride with flat, plain leather reins. That's what I'm using. Um, Sandy says, sorry she's late, but yes, she was taught this a while ago. Yes. And again, a lot of you guys already know this. I know that this is going to be a video that's not going to be like super popular because so many people do know this. But I have come across people that don't understand this technique and they're just really uncomfortable. And this is such a simple thing that you can do at home and it's no big deal. You shouldn't have any problem practicing it. And then it should translate really, really well into doing it with your horses at home. Now the results from the poll are most people are saying three videos a week and uh, a couple of two videos. We'll probably do three for the next couple weeks and see where we're at. 
Linda says, what do I think about braided reins that have knots? For me, it helps me to know they are even. So Linda, that's a great point um, to know how even you are, your reins are. I am constantly looking at my reins. I guess I'd rather not have knots in it. I'd rather you, you know, marker on your reins or dye your reins different colors to know where they are rather than having something that you can catch your hand on or that could get ripped through your hand personally. If it's working for you and you don't have, have any issues, go for it. One of the things I like with reins that don't have any knots in them is I can very easily release and the horse never gets a jerk in their mouth by having those knots hit my hands. And it's really important to me that the release feels really good to the horse. Maggie says, helpful to have a refresher video showing it over and over again. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to leave that on there for you just so you could just see kind of how I'm using my reins. Uh, and this is what you, if you were at a clinic or you were watching me ride, I just do this constantly. I loosen my reins, I gather them up, I loosen them again, and it just goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> I just do it over and over because the horses, especially during training, when the early horses, as we know, they'll tend to put their head, their head up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down as they're figuring out what to do. As the training progresses, they actually do get better and better and keep their head in a more still position but early on there is a lot of brain adjustment and it's good to know how to do it and be comfortable with it bonnie says do i suggest a certain length of rain just thinking you might need them a bit longer to allow a good head down excellent point bonnie thank you for bringing that up it is really important to have reins that are long enough for the horse to put the head down which means if you have a horse with a, that's taller or has a longer neck you're going to need longer reins i generally ride with 10 foot reins there are people that come with eight or six foot reins. Six foot reins are generally barrel racing reins. And amazingly, some people actually use them because it's easier on a trail ride. It's short. There's nothing to get in your way. But if you're doing the training, I highly recommend you ride with 10 foot reins. Even if you make your own, you can get leather reins. I buy my leather reins used. I go to tax sales. Well, <laughs> when we had tax sales, we could go to <clears throat> or buy them used on eBay and make sure they're in good condition, of course, so that I'm not going to get injured. <clears throat> what is the ideal length for rope reins? Mine are too short. A lot of rope reins are sold as eight foot reins, and I find they're very, they're too short, usually 10 foot, whether you're using leather or whether you're using uh, rope reins, that, that um, the 10 foot uh, is, a, is a good length. Cindy says, do I put both reins in one hand and pick up the head with trotty horses? Good question, Cindy. For a trotty horse, I actually keep both reins, in, I keep a rein in each hand, just like I would normally be riding, two hands, and then I put my hands forward, and I lift up for the trotty horse to get them out of the trot, and as soon as they smooth out, I put my hands back down. Yes, excellent question, guys. So, again, some people aren't comfortable with reins that long. I do think it's a good thing to get comfortable with that, because you do want the reins to be long enough for the horse to put their head all the way down. Sometimes horses don't put their heads down very much because they are expecting the, the jerk of the reins when their head goes down and because people don't give the reins loose enough. And that's actually what stops them from putting their head down. Not all the time, but sometimes. Nathan says, my 11-year-old son takes riding lessons. He pulled his reins toward his hip like I taught him and like you just described, but she said she should pull toward his shoulder. Her horses aren't gated are non-gated horses ridden differently? Actually, Nathan, that's a great question. I was taught to pull toward the hip by non-gated people. That was something that I learned from riding like quarter horse stuff and reading and listening to, you know, watching videos about that. So I would say that it totally applies even if you have a quarter horse to pull toward your hip because that's the strongest. Pulling toward your shoulder, like there's not as many muscle groups I can't really demonstrate because I don't have a lot of room here, but if you pull toward your hip, you actually can use your whole body. You can get your, your back muscles, your bicep, your tricep, your core into it. If you just pull up towards your shoulder, it limits what you can use, and especially for a child. I don't think I would use that. I would rather them be able to pull from a point of strength to be able to stop that horse if they needed it. That's a great question. I've actually not heard that, pull toward the shoulder. I've never heard that before. Interesting. Bonnie asks, wondering my thoughts on slobber straps. Um, I, they're fine. If you use them, I don't think they're the worst thing in the world. I think they're fine. Normally, I won't use slobber straps on mine because I think they're heavy. And I'd rather, and sometimes the bits are already heavy. 
And again, I ride with leather reins, so I don't need slobber straps. If you're going to ride with rope reins, I think you need slobber straps, and that's totally fine. I wouldn't try to get the heaviest ones you can. Now, I know why some people say the heavy ones are good. They'll sometimes say that because when you pick up the reins slowly, the horse, by having that heavier slobber strap, can feel that weight easier and can make the change before the rein even pulls. So I've heard that given as an explanation. So if you do have slobber straps, I'm not suggesting you change. The length of your rein is actually more important to me than which kind of reins you're using. Hi, John from Michigan. Nathan says it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's kind of weird. I'd never heard that you should pull toward the shoulder. Like I said, it's kind of a weaker position. Adrian says it pulls you deeper in the seat and anchors your feet. Pulling high pulls your forward out of your seat. Yeah, I agree with Adrian about that. Uh, that pulling high is going to pull you kind of forward. I don't, I don't get that. Unless someone wants to point me to some good articles, which I'm very willing to read, I'm going to say I don't necessarily advocate that. What is a slobber strap? So a slobber strap is usually a, a piece of leather, um, maybe about yay long, that people use. Uh, usually to tie rope reins to. So if you have some kind of rope rein, and the slobber strap is what goes around the bit. And so that's that part that actually connects your rope reins to the bit. And there's quite a few different styles that you can have. Um, heavier and lighter ones, and a lot of clinicians use it. If you, like John Lyons is a big advocate of slobber straps when he was doing his thing. And uh, so... Yeah, so slobber straps are usually just what you tie rope reins to, and then that's what you use to connect your rope to your bit. So they're usually leather. That's usually what they're for. I'm not entirely certain how long we've been using them or if there's much historical precedent for using them. The closest thing I can think of was that people that rode like Spanish horses and Baroque horses, they would ride with rawhide reins, and there would be a chain at the end of the reins, maybe a foot long, that attached the rawhide to the bit. Now the intent of that was to let horses drink. The chains could get wet because the chains could be cleaned and wouldn't be um, damaged, but the rawhide would get damaged by having it get wet when they drink water. So if you think about riding your horse all day and being on horseback all day, the horse would put his head down to drink water while you, you, know, you wouldn't get off and you wouldn't want your reins to get wet. And so those were made out of metal slobber straps are leather and would have the same problem as rawhide so historically I'm not even sure there's a precedent I think it's a newer kind of a thing that we've used now that we've had nylon and nylon rope anyway that's my guess but that's my uneducated guess as it were uh let's see I need Annette says works nice slobber oh sorry slobbers slow hands down yeah Okay, so the idea is that with slobber straps, it's supposed to make you pick up your reins slower, which is a good thing, for sure. And Marlis says she has rope reins, very light, no slobber straps, so I'm very, very responsive. If you're, what you have now is working, don't change it. Like, I am not advocating you change it unless your reins are too short. Whatever kinds of reins you have, that was not the point of the video, so no big deal. All right. Yeah. So again, tomorrow, if you think about how we're using the reins, like picking your reins up slowly, like a few people have mentioned here in the comments, that's kind of what we're talking about tomorrow with how to get a good stop. Now, the stopping also applies to not just a stop, but also to a slowdown. The idea of teaching the horse to be responsive to light pressure and having a way to train him. I've had people start doing this and seen progress very, very quickly. And some people have progress over a few days or a few weeks, but you can make a ton of progress quickly and it only takes 10 to 15 minutes every time you ride. And um, I will say, so on my private training group, which you can get access and I'll put the link in the description. So to join, it's a lifetime one, it's a hundred dollars right now, pay once and you're in for life. And we've had some people giving really nice comments how just the really the gentle style of training that I'm teaching has worked no matter what they're teaching whether it's a gated horse or a non-gated horse they had a horse like one of the ladies said she had a horse that she was going to give up on but she started doing the stop and let the horse rest you know my stop and praise and she said the horse has totally changed and that's my goal is to be able to help you guys communicate clearly with your horses and sometimes it's giving you the tools, like how to use your reins. And sometimes it's basically, I'm just sharing you with my philosophy, you know, where I'm at right now. 
And I might be someplace totally different in a year, and you guys might be someplace different. And that's what's so cool, is I'm continuing to learn. And by having to talk about these things, I'm having to try to articulate what I'm feeling and try to answer questions in a way that is understandable for everyone. And so I think that's making me a better teacher and writer and trainer as well. So I hope that has been helpful for everybody. Tomorrow we are talking about how to get a good stop, which also applies to the slowdown as well and just getting your horse nice and light. So hopefully you can join me. That's 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see me do a special video on Saturday, let me know. I don't have anything picked out yet. I know I can come up with something, so don't worry about that. Um, but I will see what I can do. Um, also watch for a fun video coming up where I will be riding uh, my horse, Jackson. Um, we're doing some bridalist stuff. Uh, my boyfriend, Parker, was up here this past week, and we just did some videoing. He's a, he's a videographer. He films weddings. That's what he does for a living. And so we did some filming with um, my horse, Jackson, and we got some cool shots of that. So I'll be sharing that with you guys maybe soon. Um, yeah, so guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a good week, weekend, evening, whichever you're at. Hope you guys get a chance to ride, and I look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow. You got this.